Welcome to this edition of When the Biomass Hits the Wind Turbine, a discussion of sustainable living and what that means to you and me. I'm Jay Warmke. And I'm Annie Warmke. And together we're going to talk about (laughs) raising healthy goats, part four, the birthing edition. Or, gosh, it's a shame those critters grow up. I changed that second one. <laughs> or Mama Mia, yeah, here Mama, we go again. Yeah, that's what oh, just, I thought you were going to sing me a song. No, I'm not Aww. going to. But we are talking about right now, uh, as we're recording this, you're going through the trauma, the annual trauma of birthing goats. And, um, and No, it, it's trauma for you because you have to put up with me. Right. Well, you worry. Worry like an expectant grandmother. So um, tell, tell a little bit about this the birthing process. I mean, that's one of the big issues there. You don't have to go into the gory details. About. <laughs> no, we need pictures for that. Right. Uh-huh. So, well, the the challenge is that most goat breeds have a season when they can get pregnant that begins sometime towards the end of August and runs till maybe the middle of February. Um, there are a couple breeds that can get pregnant year round, but um, they're not that common in the U.S. So, um, if they are, I don't know about it, and I don't understand why anybody would want to have a goat that's going to come into heat every 21 days, and you got to worry about it getting pregnant. Um, so I try to have my goat kids born in the winter because I have more time to uh, – Worry about them. <laughs> yeah, I have more time mm-hmm. – well, not just to worry, but also to go to the barn in the middle of the night, maybe two times in the night, to check on them. Um, and uh, – but – it. The idea is they're going to be pregnant about 20 weeks. So you just want to start from when they come into heat, and then you're going to measure that 20 weeks, and you're going to decide, is that when I really want to be out in the cold or the heat or whatever, having kids? Mm -hmm. Um, There's a lot of nutrition that needs to be dealt with with a goat that's going to um, get pregnant and then be pregnant for those 20 weeks, and then also produce milk for maybe quite a long period of time. And that's a big strain on the body. And if you think about it, uh, it's the same for human beings. We uh, we don't do too good of a job sometimes at teaching ourselves around how we're going to nurse a baby and and do all the right things to have and carry that baby. But it's a lot of the same stuff around minerals and um, and general nutrition. So how do we help that goat to be as healthy as she can be? And one of the challenges that we have in North America is a de- a de- depletion of selenium and sometimes copper in the soil. And that's pretty bad because the plants then cannot pull that up into the uh, main part of the plant so that the animal is ingesting or eating um, enough selenium and enough copper. So there are deficiencies and these can cause big problems with birthing. They can cause uh, problems with uh, aborting the fetus. Uh, they can cause problems with the kid and how it's placed in the body when it's going to uh, come out of the body. And also in passing the um, placenta, which is all the stuff that the baby is in when it's inside of the mother. And those things all have to happen according to uh, a, uh, a process. And if they don't, then there are a lot of other problems that happen along the way. Well, I think uh, a lot of people, if they thought about it, and I'm, I'm, I'm guessing they don't give birthing of goats a great deal of thought on a daily basis, but if it is a da- dairy producing animal, it needs to get pregnant and give birth periodically. Otherwise, no uh, milk. Yeah, it doesn't produce milk forever. Well, some goats will keep going, but that's unique to that goat system. It's not a breed issue. It's just like you happen to get a a goat a goat that'll do that, and that you have kept healthy enough and good enough minerals and good enough nutrition. I remember your first goat, Eleanor. um, Didn't she go like two years? Yeah, she could go two years of milking. Yeah, she did do that, and she didn't want to dry up when I wanted her to. So, um, so the other part of this equation is the buck which is the male part of this. And he's the one that decides how many kids she's going to have. No, she's going to decide how many kids. He's going to decide what kind, whether they're male or female. Mm-hmm. And um, so he's got to be healthy. I, wait, wait, decides. I'm, I'm assuming this is genetically, not they're it sitting is, down having a planning meeting and – Saying, and they're going, and, we're going to have kids together. Yeah. What do you think? Your job Registering is to... Registering at different stores yeah, and, and saying... And getting mm-hmm. to Target want, for I their want. clothing and mm-hmm. things, yeah. No, they don't really have a discussion. In fact, the buck is, if you have a buck in your herd, the whole time 
that that herd is in the field doing whatever, unless somebody's in heat, that buck is nothing. He has one job, and that is to make babies, and he doesn't guard. He's selfish. He's really selfish because he's nice and big, and he can just sling his weight around. But the the queen of the herd and the other goats that are um, high up in the herd, they pretty much keep him in place. And I know that's an issue for you because you need to rotate the buck, you know, for genetic uh, diversity. Right. You don't want to inbreed. Right. Although sometimes that can happen, and a first generation in the goat world they think is okay. Um, in my experience, the, that first generation, they say they're breeding for genetics, meaning they're looking for certain qualities in that animal. But in my experience, I see smaller animal um, a less healthy animal, and that's just my experience. So genetically, uh, we want to have a, a buck that is not related to the doe that he's going to breed with, and that's the, that's the best. Um, he's got to be healthy, and he's got to be ready for the job. He's got to uh, be able to go the distance. So you don't want him to be running with the herd uh, and have several does that come into heat at the same time, he can actually drop dead from exertion. And some people think that's funny, but the reality is you want to be a good goat herder. And if you're going to be good at it, you're going to understand his job and how to keep him healthy and doing what he needs to do to make really wonderful kids. Um, so I know that you keep the buck separated most of the time, but... Since these are herd animals, you you need to have companion animals in with the buck, right? So you put a weather or 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 have two bucks, but they also are our fields and everything is set up so they can see the other goats as well. So they're they might be upset and banging on the fence, but that's because somebody's in heat, not because they're mad at being kept away from the herd. But in the summer, they're all together, everybody's happy. Uh, they know their place. They have great respect for the queen and her uh, minions and um, and all is well. But again, keeping everybody healthy, keeping everybody going, knowing that come the end of August, maybe maybe we won't breed till December, but we've got to keep everybody going um, and and at their peak as, as best we can so that they produce good kids. Um, the other thing is the quality of the animal. So if you're going to breed animals, don't start with a sick one because you're not going to end up with a good return from that in more ways than one and perhaps a dead animal. I see this all the time online right now. Um, it's winter and uh, lots of pictures of dead babies and dead does because they bought a doe at an auction or a couple of does. They don't know anything about the animal. They don't know anything about goats. And she has a problem. The kid's got her leg twisted under the hip and they wait for the vet. They don't go in and see what to do about it. So um, goats require a lot of knowledge and a lot of vets don't really know much about goats. So if you want to be a goat herder, you better be prepared to be somewhat of a veterinarian. Well, one thing, and, and you're talking about the knowledge, and I know you've got a real feel for it. You, you'll come back after spending time up there going, you know, um, Grace is going to, I think she's going into labor. She's going to have a kid any minute now or today or tomorrow at the latest. And I look at these goats and I'm like, Phew. I don't know. They look the same to me. So what are you looking for when... When, when they're going to go into labor? Yeah. What, what is it that you see that I don't see? Well, um, first of all, there's going to you're actually going to see as they progress, uh, you're going to actually see movement of the kids that are inside of her and they're moving around. And um, I've got a stethoscope so I can listen for heartbeats and I can see when they change position and get into position uh, to birth, and the, which is different. It's like she carries them like two saddlebags, and then when they're ready to be born, one of them moves, hopefully just one at a time, moves into position with their feet forward and their nose down on those feet, and that's the way you hope they're going to come out. Um, their their uh, butts, their, where their vagina and their anus is, uh, has, it gets very puffy, and there's a lot of blood there, and so it gets 
pink, very pink and swollen. And then at some point, they start to do what's called bagging up. And that means that they start to produce some milk. And that milk is the colostrum, which is needed by the baby because it has all of the immunity that the mother has. And we want that passed on to the baby. It keeps them fairly safe for the first six months of life. And then the next thing is that within about 48 hours of kidding, um, there are muscles at the tailbone on the top of the tailbone, and those muscles will go from being fairly tight to being like melted butter. And that is just the muscles relaxing and getting ready to prepare to uh, allow that great big blob to come and be passed through there. And there are other things uh, when she actually goes into to, uh, soft labor or maybe prior to that. So I have a goat that two weeks before she kids, she passes what's called the mucus plug. And it's like somebody sneezed, and it's a lot of snot. Um, and then she might pass a little bit more in a week before she kids, and then pretty much right on the money at two weeks, she's going to, she's going to give birth. Um, other ones don't pass any of that until they're starting into soft labor. And in the soft labor, they'll kind of go off on their own. Sometimes they don't do anything. I mean, I've had a couple that just poof, and there's the baby. But mostly they'll go off on their own. This is a very natural thing to do. And uh, and they will stare at the wall of the barn or at the fence or something like that. And then, um, and then they might paw at the ground as they start having contractions closer together and cry. Uh, they might lay down on their side so they can push. Um, so they have a lot of different ways, just like women do if they weren't forced to lay down on a bed, uh, to begin to push that baby out. And what you're hoping to see, uh, the best possible return is those two little feet that are sticking out in the beginning of a little Hopefully nose. they're the front feet, right? Well, the back feet, you can <laughs> deal with that if you have to because the butt's pretty big coming out too. But you got to know what you're looking at because there could be one foot and then where's the other one? Or there could be no feet or there could be two feet and no head. Um, these are all things you can go online and look at. Uh, at pictures and see what to do about moving those kids. And you've got to be ready with a birthing kit. You need to have some way to lubricate up your uh, hands. You need some plastic gloves or something to put on your hands. And you need to be prepared to go in there and um, and turn the turn the baby. So what would you have on hand getting ready for this birth? Well, I have a basket that I keep, a big basket. So if she's going to have twins... Uh, and they're coming pretty quickly, then the first one I'm going to put in the basket so I don't step on it or she doesn't step on it and leave it there until the next one comes. Um, in that basket, I keep um, two plastic boxes that have lids on them, and they contain things like very sharp scissors that are wrapped in a nice clean cloth so that I can cut the umbilical cord, and then another pair of scissors that I can do other things with that I might need to do, which I don't know, but I just don't want to use both the I don't want to use the scissors for the umbilical cord for anything else. I have a saline solution in a squirt bottle, a big one, so I can uh, um, sanitize things without burning. Um, I, uh, gosh, what else do I have? I have lots of towels and washcloths and um, uh, water so that I can wash my hands. I have my charger for my telephone. Uh, I have a baby bottle warmer so I can heat water quickly if I need it for some reason. Um, I have acidophilus, which I use to put on the uh, umbilical cord after I cut it. And I also have cayenne pepper. So if the um, umbilical cord bleeds heavily, I can stop the bleeding with the cayenne pepper. Okay, well, I'm going to interrupt you right there and just remind everybody that you are listening to When the Biomass Hits the Wind Turbine with Jay and Annie Warmke, reminding you once again that it is, in fact, the end of the world as we know it. And thank God. And thank God. And we're talking about birthing goats, and that may sound a little bit bizarre from a sustainability standpoint. But I think a lot of people, when they think about sustainability and they think about homesteading, they do think about raising their own food. And as part of this fantasy that emerges in a lot of people's um, minds, you get, bless <laughs> you, thank you, you. you. You're allergic to fantasies. Um, they, they get this idea, I'm going to raise animals. I'm going to, you know, have my own milk. I'm going to have my own eggs. I'm going to do all of those things. And it's all good. 
but goats clearly are very sustainable livestock. They're they're fairly light on the land. They are sociopaths, and you got to be prepared for that. In but, your uh, humble in opinion, in my humble opinion, but they're um, but they're easy to deal with in a small homestead, and they provide milk, especially for women, because you can right. make them do what you want them to do. Yeah, I mean, if you get knocked over, you know, I mean, you can get hurt by a goat. Well, obviously. you could be killed by a buck, but I don't. I'm not going to keep animals like that. We're we're mm-hmm. looking at peace agree. So I want to know I can put my face in the face of that animal and trust their response to me. So when I'm bending over them to help them kid or help them with an injury, I know they're not going to attack me. So if you're if you're living the life, you know, living the dream, going to be raising goats, you're going to be milking these goats. Well, as part of that process, they've got to have kids. And, of course, there's nothing cuter than little baby goats jumping around. And, yeah. and as I said in the introduction, it's a really a shame that they do grow up because they're so... Well, we could say that about most babies. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know most people I know, you know, oh, they were such a cute kid. And now he's well, a senator. Well, but let me so. say that I think we live in a culture that believes in the Lassie syndrome. And Lassie uh, has been a very famous uh, uh, collie dog um, over the years. And and that dog knew everything, and it knew to go get things and save people and rescue drowning people. I mean, that dog could do everything but sing. I'm, I'm wondering where you're going with well, this. Well, wait a minute. It could do everything but sting, sing this tar bangle banner in Spanish. And so we then, as a culture, adopted this attitude that animals know what to do instinctively. <laughs> and so all dogs know to come and okay. stay and shut up and whatever, and they don't. And I, just, we, I just had this vision of like a goat playing the role of Lassie. That's right. <laughs> Jimmy fell down the well and goes, yeah, he's going to die. You know? <laughs> no, he doesn't. He doesn't have any food. Yeah, I'm not helping him out of there. He's a, he's a goner. Yeah, Sorry. Yeah, he what? was trying to get in my food, and I head-butted him. Is there anything to eat? But right. it's so I think we have this attitude about goats, and we'll say things very dismissive, like, oh, they'll eat anything. They'll, you know, it's not true. And so we have this Lassie syndrome about goats. And so the fact that an animal is pregnant does not mean that they have the ability to deliver that goat or carry right. it to term. I think that's true with most domesticated animals, right? They have been and altered humans. in some way. Well, yes. humans are a domesticated animal. So, okay, so you, you've told us what you look for when, when a goat goes into well, let's labor. Let's talk about what you psychology. Have on hand. Yeah, let's talk about the psychology. Okay, the psychology of, this. of why on earth you would raise goats or the <laughs> psychology of goats? Well, the psychology of why some people would raise goats because, oh my word, they don't, they know nothing. I have resorted on Facebook to write, please go to the library and read some books about goats. They have pictures. Because I, I think you should do that about children as well. Well, I know, but I'm not even going there with that because that's a, mm-hmm. that's a whole other story. But anyway, the, the thing with goats is that they do have a certain psychology about them. And so they know who they like. They know who they don't like. So if it was clear they didn't like me, I would not be birthing kids with them. They'd have to go to somebody else because they have to be able to trust me. And it's a it's a time of them changing tremendously. So you have a a doling that would be a, a, a female um, that is less than uh, that that's never had kids, and uh, she might be hell on wheels, just a real corker. But then she gets pregnant, and as she gets to the place of going to be in labor and all that, she becomes a whole different animal. And and I'm talking about Tilly right now. Tilly has been, just could jump over anything and never let you, never come to her name, even though she look up and know her name. She run from me, ha, 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 wait till I get right to her and then take off. Now she's like, oh, you want me to come? And she goes and stands where she's supposed to, to wait for me to feed her. I don't even have to tie her up. And uh, I, I got to think that that has something to do with the birthing process and being pregnant. And then when they go into labor, I need them to trust me that I can be in there with them, that they psychologically feel like it's okay for Annie to be there with me. She's the head of the herd. If they abort, so I've had a couple of goats where they got headbutted and they had an abortion. Um one of them we had to end up selling because she never got over it. She wouldn't stop crying. It drove me insane. Um, that was the guy who sprayed across the road, and she aborted from the spray. But they they feel things. They care about things. No, they're not humans, 
but they do care deeply. And when their DNA kicks in, um, once they are in labor, they start calling to the baby. They have different sounds. Um, They have their own language. Each goat has its own idea about this, but they start calling to the baby. Uh, They might start licking themselves or licking everything because that's their DNA telling them you must lick the baby and clean the baby and keep the baby clean. And when the baby's coming out, they are calling to the baby. Sometimes the baby will call back while it's not even born yet, Mm. and that's pretty cute. Um, But not always. Usually they're kind of in a stunned phase trying to come through that tiny opening uh, to get out. And um, and then once that baby uh, gets out, usually the the um, mama will stand up for the delivery, so the baby drops and that breaks the umbilical cord. She doesn't always do it. Sometimes she's too tired and she's like, "Get me out of this!" And the baby comes out, and you you just wait for her to break the cord. She'll chew it, or it'll somehow break. I try not to touch the kid until she has done her job. Um, usually that she's uh, cleaned the kid. Sometimes there's a lot of mucus in the nose, and I might get um, some uh, clean cloth and wipe the nose out or even suction it with a little baby squeegee, a human baby squeegee ball, one of those blue ones, um, just to make sure there's nothing hurting the the uh, so it's, airways. So it's breathing properly. Yeah. But I don't get in the way. And if I think that there's any chance that she's going to have a problem accepting the kid, uh, I won't touch the kid until she shows me that she's going to let that kid latch on and drink milk and um, do what needs to be done. Because the most important thing is every goat deserves to have a mama. And they need that. They learn how to be a good mom. They learn how to be a good goat that way. They understand what's expected in the herd. There's a hierarchy in the herd, and if that goat is not adopted by the mother, then it has no place in the herd. And and the mother protects it from the other Absolutely. goats. Absolutely, and some goats are better. Aren't very kind. To no, each other. and they'll push and pinch and bite, and and my goats are pretty good. Um, I have one that can be somewhat harsh, but she's a very protective mom. She <laughs> she runs everywhere the baby runs and waits, just like you know a helicopter mom kind of thing. But anyway, when that kid is born. She's going to clean it. She's going to make sure that everything is great for that baby. And the more that baby calls to her, then the more milk she's going to let down. And that's really important because we need her to have the colostrum so that that baby gets a natural immunity. And she's either going to like that kid or she's not. And we hope that she's going to like the kid. And then she's going to take care of that kid all of its life. I have goats that are four generations, and they still all sleep together. Not when they have kids. When they've got little kids, they'll separate out. But then as that kid gets a little older, everybody will sleep together. Um, And then after the kid is born, I leave everybody together for um, at least a week, uh, the mama and the baby. And then I put the kids all together in one space so they get to be a club. And then that way when something's wrong... They will sometimes sleep with each other or they play with each other. And that way they have more than just their mom as their backup. And um, it's really fun and sweet and cute and adorable. And they sniff my hair and I love all of that. But I do get myself in quite a snit as far as when it's all going to happen. Right. Well, and speaking of you, because you're you're worried, you worry about all of the potential problems. What are some of the potential problems, you know, uh, In birth and then immediately after. Well, some of them could be the lack of selenium. Um, They also can have a lot of problems. Uh, Their blood sugar can go down or they can have ketosis, which is uh, they don't have a good enough. um, That can happen also before. Uh, There are a lot of things that can happen that go wrong, and it's all mostly around nutrition. So I have blackstrap molasses, and I make a nice warm a water pail for them with the molasses when they're in labor. So they've got good blood sugar and a lot of iron going through their system. Um, the baby can be dead. Uh, there are so many things. you can't. I couldn't possibly go into all of it. But the one thing that I'm going for the whole time is to have the mom be healthy, the baby be healthy, and everybody get along and then come back into the herd together. Well, this year a big issue was, was oh, the frost, weather. Frostbite. You know, I mean – 
they always seem to want to give birth right at like the worst possible Well, when time. the weather changes, they often will, or when the moon is full. But so frostbite in winter, that's a tough one. And, and we had some bad experiences with that. I've had really great success with bee propolis and raw honey mix together, uh, putting on ears to bring the ear back. Uh, this year, I wasn't so lucky, and so I have two kids that have are going to lose the tips of their ears. But they could have lost the whole ear. I've seen goats online that lost their noses, their feet. Um, they're they're dead. And this is because they're born, they're wet. When they're, they're born. wet, and whatever's dangling from that body is going to is going to get frozen. And so we did have a kid that was born at five below zero, and and she hit her. And I was not a good goat herder that day. I'm sorry to say I take complete responsibility, and I'm very sad about it. Well, you'll be hearing from that goat's lawyer, no doubt. And All right. Malpractice. Or the goat police. Okay. So as we were saying before, this is, um, this is a fantasy-type animal for the, for the homesteader. So if you were going to – I know you get a lot of messages, a lot of contact from people who are wanting to raise goats. Uh, how, would you, how would you advise somebody – about getting into this. All right. Well, the first thing you do is go to the library and read some books about goat herding. And then you buy my book, The Business of Goat Herding, <laughs> Ooh, that I wrote plug. with Carrie, Carrie Starr, The Business of Goat Herding. It's very good, and it's very simple, and it doesn't burrow down too deeply into any one topic, but it'll help you get started. And then go to goat college or go to spend some time with some goat herders and do it at different times of the year um, and learn what you can. Learn to trim hooves. Learn how to milk. Learn how to make some cheeses that are simple from the milk. And don't get goats until you have learned the basics because you will end up miserable and sad. And even the best of us that try the hardest we can, get up in the middle of the night, have a birthing room, everything, you're going to have something go wrong. You need to have allies. You need to have friends that can help you um, when something happens. Is there a way that someone can practice? I mean, like sometimes people will go to the dog pound and play with well, puppies. Well, you could buy or... yourself you could you could buy uh, a couple of weathers, uh, which are goats that have been castrated, males that have been castrated. And I do suggest that if you've never had livestock or you've never had goats, the first season gets get a couple of weathers. They can chew on all your brambles and your poison ivy and everything and you'll get to understand their nutrition levels their personality levels and they'll be just like having dogs and then after that you can make all the mistakes on them and then you graduate to the next level and hopefully make less mistakes okay well uh, you have been listening to when the biomass hits the wind turbine with jay and annie warmke we want to thank our Emmy Award-winning producer, Adam Rich. <laughs> yes, we do. Hiding behind the glass over there. Yes, we And we want to thank you for spending just a little bit of time with us. And as your grandmother probably told you, the secret to a happy and sustainable life is... Play nice with others, and Jay. And your goats. Yes, and clean up your own mess, Jay. And don't forget to eat your vegetables just like the goats do. Until next Mother time. Earth will sing and her children will be You can find more information on living sustainably in our unsustainable world at blueRockStation.com. <laughs>